Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Shake Sales. I am super excited to talk with you today. My name is Maggie. I'm the host and happy Thursday. Today, uh, we are talking with Colby Martineau. He is the Director of Account Management at Zoom Info. So I'm super excited to talk with Colby today um, just about coaching cold outreach, but I'd love to um, have you introduce yourself to Colby. Yeah, uh, really happy to be here. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you um, and, and anyone who might be listening. Um, one thing I'll just make abundantly clear, you know, these are my views, right? They're not necessarily Zoom Info's views. Um, I don't think I'll say anything terribly, uh, uh, you know, important or, or consequential. Um, but yes, I've been with Zoom Info for about six years. I uh, started off as an individual contributor. Um, I've done the SDR thing. I've done field marketing. I've managed a field sales team. Um, and now I currently am responsible for, um, you know, portion of our account uh, management uh, structure uh, internationally. So, so kind of er everywhere around the globe. Awesome. Awesome. Super impressive background and just your growth with the company. It's, it's actually rare to find that people stay with their company right now for six years. And it's a testament to where you work and that you're probably really, really enjoying it there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They've, um, it's been a good place to grow, right? We've, mm -hmm. we've grown so quickly. A lot of this stuff has been battlefield promotions. Hey, we need somebody to go figure that out. And, and it's been cool to have that opportunity and, you know, selling that product and, and selling into the space. I get to talk to sales and marketing people all day who also generally like to talk. So it's been a pretty good <laughs> ride. That's a good point. I, I was just talking with someone earlier that, you know, we're both kind of, you know, we sell sales tools or tools that salespeople use. So it's kind of like the, the triple threat of everything. It's like, we're salespeople selling sales software to salespeople. So it's like, you have the opportunity to learn about sales literally all day long or talk about sales yeah. all day long, which get really nerdy with it. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, it, sales is, um, you know, it's a profession, it's a skill, it's a craft. Mm -hmm. So I like talking about it and, learning from people and having conversations. Yeah, no, definitely. And there's a lot of nuances to it because we're talking with other humans on the other side of it and, and you know, kind of managing those relationships there. So there's tons of things in there. And yeah, just given your background to, um, you know, the topic of today's discussion is, you know, you've been in leadership at Zoom Info and I want to talk about coaching cold outreach. So like you said, you talk with other salespeople, um, you know, and you're in the space of talking about sales conversations and things like that, but then even with your own team too. So I'm sure with your experience over, you know, the last six years at Zoom Info, you've had a, the opportunity to see both the good and the bad when it comes to prospecting. So, you know, what's like, I'm just curious, what's something that you, you'd love to educate all of your Zoom Info customers or, you know, just people in general in sales about uh, prospecting? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. I think there's a couple of things. Um, if we look at um, prospecting, you know, cold outreach, right? Unwarrant, you know, unsolicited, I should say, cold outreach. That's sort of my definition of prospecting here. Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about um, like email outreach, messaging, things like that, one of the things that I always struggle with, and I, and, and I see a lot of SDRs particularly who maybe they don't have a particularly defined workflow or process, um, is finding the balance between volume and personalization. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, I can spend four hours researching and sending the perfect email to this one person, maybe it's a CFO of uh, IBM or whatever, like, but the likelihood of that one email paying off, it's just like, it is a very, very, very hard thing to do to spend that amount of time on one touch when we know we're going to have to touch that person anywhere between five to seven to eight times before we even get a reply. And that reply might be like, don't ever talk to me again. <laughs> and you, if you're spending 15 minutes on each email, 
five times, that's an hour and 15 minutes for one contact to tell you they're not interested. Mm. So having this solution, um, you know, Zoom Info has one it's called Zoom Info Engage, but there's great ones out there, Outreach, Sales Loft, other ones I haven't used. Um, being able to personalize, so maybe create it, uh, so it's kind of like your Mad Lib, right? I have generic value prop for people in this particular industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I can insert some custom fields like a name or, you know, something like that. But then I can send that uh, across, you know, 25, 50 people. Mm-hmm. It's still reasonably compelling because it is, it is relevant. And then I can A-B test that and figure out like, what was my message resonating? So in a really roundabout way, the, the challenge is often finding a way that we can scale personalization so that way we can meet that happy balance. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Totally, totally. Um, yeah, and yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like, yeah, we could spend all this time personalizing for this one contact that we get and we're super excited about it. Uh, but that's not scalable. Uh, and at the end of the day, I mean, obviously there has to be quality over quantity at some point, but it's finding the balance of both because, you know, as SDRs or AEs do outreach, they have KPIs of how many people they even need to touch in a given day. Um, so obviously you can't do that if you're spending 20 minutes researching someone. Uh, but yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think it comes into play of like making sure you're segmenting so that your personalization does hit home uh, with those people. So it's like, let's segment everyone that just became a new director of account management um, and have something super relevant to say to them. Mm -hmm. And then you can check those boxes. Right. Uh, Absolutely. And I think that you kind of have started to get onto this, but and I, I didn't come up with this. Somebody did, and I took it from them, and I don't remember who, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but it was, it's essentially, there is no, there's no secret to outreach. There's no like, oh, here's the perfect email, right? Or the perfect subject line. Like I've seen tons and tons of these conversations with like growth hackers on <laughs> on on LinkedIn. And there's, there's probably an element of, of value there but ultimately it's it's only is it the right person that you're hitting with the right message Mm -hmm. at the right time Mm -hmm. and you need tools to help you do that and to do that at scale but that's the code like it is a i think of it i'm a data guy Mm -hmm. um so if was a data company, I'm a very analytical thinker. I'm an operations kind of thinker. And I look at it as that's our framework for like our Mad Lib outreach. Like what's the right message? When is it the right time? So that can be intent data. It can be, uh, you know, firmographic data. It can be an acquisition. It depends on like your space. And is it the right person, which is the segmenting. So mm-hmm. it's more than just job title. It's the job function Mm -hmm. and director of account management at zoom info is very different than director of account management at IBM and understanding that and having a, a a way to um, make those decisions and build those audiences um, at scale such that it still feels personalized. Mm-hmm. that's the secret sauce. And I think it's, I would argue it's probably different for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I love what you say. It's not just about the title, but it's actually like looking at those companies, seeing those different roles. Cause I mean, there's, yeah, there's managers, there's director roles, and they're going to be different at different companies. So it's being able to drill into those certain things. Um, so you can save time. Uh, but also get, you know, strategic with your outreach there too. And yeah, I think what you said is the right message, the right audience and the right time too. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Awesome. 
And this goes into my next question. Uh, and I heard you say this on a recent webinar, it kind of ties into what you were just talking about, but that you've coached your SDRs in the past to put themselves in the shoes of their prospects when writing cold emails. And I think that's super important. And a lot of people say it like, hey, put yourself in the shoes of, you know, um, that the manager of finance or the director of finance that you're reaching out to. But when it comes to coaching your SDRs on, you know, putting themselves in the shoes there of, you know, their prospects, can you go into detail of how you would coach them on that? Definitely. Um, there's, there's sort of two things there. I think there's the figurative and the literal. Um, the literal is probably easier to coach. And what I mean by that is like, literally think about what the person is actually doing. You're trying to get somebody, um, their calendar's booked back to back to back to back. There's seven other people that are calling this person trying to sell them something. They're reading your email on a phone, on a device that's like this big. <laughs> so like little things, like send the message to yourself. See, can I read it on a phone? Does it look good? Is it just a bunch of garbled text? Does it format properly? Um, make it easy for them to engage with your brand, to engage with your, your outreach. Um, you know, there's tons and tons of research out there and I'm not the expert on this, but, um, looking at the ideal amount of like words in an email in a prospecting email. So that is more to do with the person who's receiving it than it is the message itself. So when you put yourself in the position of, um, as an SDR, understand that who you're reaching out to is, is crazy busy. Like they don't, their job is not to buy whatever you're selling. Yeah. Your job is to try and get their attention. So that attention, again, it needs to be that like right person, right message, right time. Mm -hmm. That's it in a way that's like, act, they can actually action on it. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the literal put themselves in that position, understand their, um, you know, pains, their challenges, like what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. And then I think the part that's like a little bit more interesting, at least to me is the figurative. Like if I get another email that's prospecting that asks me for 15 minutes without telling me what's in it for, for me, like I'm going to lose my mind. If I gave 15 minutes to everybody who asked for 15 minutes of my time, I wouldn't do my own job. Yeah. And I believe in like the sales gods or sales karma. So I reply to people and I'm not mm -hmm. that guy that like puts people on blast on, you know, LinkedIn and without going like too far down the tangent, <laughs> like nobody thinks that you're cool. If you're watching this, and you're one of those people that puts a bad email up and it puts the SDR on blast. The dude's like 15 years old, just out of college. Doesn't even know what life is like. No shit. He doesn't know how to write a good email. Like give him a break. Why don't you tell yeah. him like give, help him. All right. Or just ignore him. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll always, you know, if I can tell that they've done something well or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll at least say, Hey, like my two cents, I'm not your guy, but like, whatever. But the point I was trying to make is like, I don't, as a buyer and your buyers, we don't owe you shit. Mm -hmm. We don't owe you 15 minutes. I don't owe <laughs> you a response. I don't owe you a reply, nothing. A salesperson in the absence of presenting value is a pest. Mm -hmm. You constantly calling that person without a reason why, without a clear and concise thesis, hey, Colby, I'm reaching out to you because I think most directors of account management that we speak to, they're having a really hard time with this challenge of, um, you know, account segmentation. And we mm -hmm. have helped all of these companies that look like Zoom Info do that. Now, given what Zoom Info does, probably not a good buyer for you, <laughs> but I'll at least respond, right? Like yeah. I, you've, you've, there's value in it. I want five minutes. I want to show you this. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can solve that problem. But 
when I coach my SDRs, particularly ones that are new, like Zoom Info likes to hire people right out of school. Um, Mm -hmm. It's generally, it's a more cost effective way to do it, first of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, like they don't have bad habits. So we can turn them into what a Zoom Info SDR looks like. And we have literally hundreds of SDRs. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I'll tell them is like, why are you reaching out to this person? What are they, they don't owe you. Don't get frustrated that they didn't book a meeting with you. Mm-hmm. Don't like, oh, you didn't reply? Well, maybe it's because your messaging was off. Is that the right person? Do we hit them mm-hmm. at a compelling time in the buying cycle? Were they busy? That's the kind of stuff that is really challenging. And especially given, you know, we ask SDRs to do a lot with a very small amount of coaching Mm -hmm. the average life cycle of an sdr is like six months or something in the SaaS industry (laughs) Mm -hmm. so by the time they get ramped they're either promoted because they're good or they're fired and they're bad Mm -hmm. so you gotta help these guys understand how to actually make that jump make that journey um and one of the ways that you guys can do that as your yourselves is to try and actually understand what the life of the person that you're reaching out to mm-hmm. is. What are the problems they're trying to solve? How does your solution solve that problem and add value? Make it clear, actionable, and simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. No, and you're totally right. I mean, I agree with everything you say, and I'm kind of in the space of of talking about those things, too. And you make a really good point. Like, no one's role is to be a full-time buyer. Um, Like, you're not sitting in your role every day like, I can't wait till someone sells a new software to me. Because even those processes alone, like some people don't even like being in sales processes, depending on their role. I think for us, it's a bit different because... You know, it's exciting for us to be in a sales process. We like to learn from it. Maybe we'll get some coaching tips from it or something. We'll learn something in the process of it. It's like R&D for us. But other people who aren't in sales roles, I mean, that's definitely not something that they may want to go through. Um, You know, so make it easy for them. Don't assume that they're a full-time buyer. They have a whole other job and their job isn't to respond to your emails and give you 15 minutes. Especially like you said, you're getting inundated with a ton of those same emails in there. So I think it's, yeah, you hit it the nail on the head there. And I think that the higher in an organization you go, the more visible those people are and the more people are reaching out to them. Mm -hmm. So that message of thinking about that, take a step back for a second and just think. Mm -hmm that's going to help you in your outreach. It will help you craft a message that is more, um, you know, uh, well received. And also like sometimes you don't need to go to the CEO, right? Like if I'm trying to get a deal done, unless it's like something crazy, probably not going to the CEO in the first place. Yeah. Start lower where Mm -hmm. they're maybe have a little bit more time. If you can't get them to respond, then, then that's another opportunity for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, different methods of going about it there too. And yeah, you talk about the messaging and kind of just, you know, it's a way to look at it yourself. Like you can look at, you can send yourself an email, look at it on your phone. Um, And you talked about training with SDRs, like they may be trained the least and they're in their roles for not that long before they get promoted or go elsewhere. And and I heard you say this um, online somewhere, but that as a salesperson, you talk for a living versus maybe someone in marketing that writes for a living. Uh, And obviously, I mean, people talk about all the time of, you know, sales and marketing should collaborate and there's no argument against that. But I'm really just curious of, you know, for your team, um, your SDRs, AEs, people writing emails on your team, when do you bring in your marketing team to help with that copywriting? Yeah, good, good question. It's sort of the age old, like sales versus marketing. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, at Zoom Info, I will say we are lucky and fortunate that we have like really, <clears throat> really tight alignment with the two, mm-hmm. um, which is, is great. I would urge you, especially if your businesses, um, you know, are 
uh, large enough to have someone who's dedicated to product marketing. You know, mm-hmm. if it's a small scrappy startup, that might be one person wearing like four different hats. Mm-hmm. But especially if they're product marketing, they should be involved in any cadences or sequences or sales flows you're creating, anything that's going to go out to, you know, dozens and hundreds of people, because these are the people that understand, or at least think they understand what your buyers want to hear. Mm -hmm. And if there's a disconnect between that and what you're hearing on the field, then your marketing and your sales are selling two different things. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, as a sales leader, it is crazy, crazy, crazy important that product marketing and your sales team are sending and receiving the same message and the same feedback. But when it comes to actually writing something, like sales guys, we have a bad rap in terms of like, you know, our intelligence and our emotional intelligence (laughs) and our written intelligence. And I think sometimes that's true. So (laughs) if you, if you're struggling with that, like marketing would love a better relationship with sales. Mm -hmm. And if you have a poor relationship with your marketing department, you know, common points of friction are, um, you know, what is an MQL defining a marketing qualified lead? Mm-hmm. Because that's what they pay, care about. They say, Hey, I, I generated 250 leads. And then you turn around and say, well, these were all shit. Well, there's a point of conflict and this is a much mm-hmm. sort of bigger conversation. But if you want to start breaking down the barriers of alignment, having them weigh in and understand and see how that message is actually impacting positively or negatively. Mm -hmm. Uh, even if it's something as simple as that email or helping write a call script or at least vet a call script, Mm -hmm. um, that starts to build the bridge of trust. And it's also going to make your teams more successful. Marketing also generally has solutions and tools to like make things look pretty Mm -hmm. and a little bit more professional and, knows how to use a passive versus an active voice and things like that, where that's not like, I don't get paid on that. So I've never had to develop those skills. Yeah. So I would say, yes, definitely bring them in. Mm -hmm. But you gotta be wary of what we kind of started out at the beginning of that quality versus quantity. Like Mm -hmm. they can't be involved in every single one off email. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it's having the right amount of collaboration there. And and like you said, maybe it's just aligning on the overall messaging. Like what are the sales reps communicating in all their channels? Doesn't mean it have to be a single written email, uh, but their whole sequence, let's say, or, you know, this group of reps and what they're talking about. And does that align with what product marketing is talking about? Uh, because, yeah, I think that's definitely important and just, you know, builds that team relationship too. Definitely. And, and have them understand, you know, marketing, how they're impacting the sales funnel and sales, how marketing's impacting the sales funnel like that. I will use the term a lot. Um, and it, it again, didn't come up with it, uh, like radical candor though. Mm. Uh, I use it as the way that I sell. It's the way that I coach. Um, and, it makes no sense for there to be a point of friction within an organization, particularly a go to market organization because mm-hmm. ultimately every single person in that business, if they're the right person and they understand what their role is, they're all trying to make you sell better. Yeah. All of their MBOs are based off of selling, you know, driving bottom line growth. Mm-hmm. So if there's a point of friction there, that means you have misaligned expectations Mm -hmm. And that may, you know, this is probably more towards like the sales leaders that might be listening to this. But if you feel that point of friction, call it out. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, seems like we're a little misaligned here. Am I I totally off? Call it out, address it, and then work from there. Because nobody wants to work in that uncomfortable environment. Nobody wants to be blamed for anything else. But when you have that sort of collaborative space. And again, I think Zoom Info has done a really good job of modeling that and leaders have to model that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it puts us in a position to still be a scrappy startup in the way that we approach the market. Yeah. We want to test new things and learn. Um, but also to take feedback and realize when something's not working, we can change it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's great. I love uh, the way you put it, the radical candor there and how leadership can benefit from that too, because yeah, at the end of the day, you know, we, we have to nicely maybe call things out that aren't working um, and that might be misaligned with these two different teams there too. So yeah, I really appreciate you going through that and giving these tips here to sales leaders, Colby. Um, so yeah, just a couple takeaways I got from this is, um, you know, just from the, the cold outreach perspective here is making sure you have the right, you know, message, the right audience at the right time. And, uh, and then also in leadership, having that radical candor, making sure that alignment is there and being proactive about it. So maybe calling that out or, um, you know, noticing that misalignment and communicating it there too. Uh, but yeah, anything else, you know, you'd like to add or give us a takeaway before we finish up here, Colby? Yeah, I, I'm sure there's stuff that I'll think about, um, <laughs> but, you know, this is just sort of one person's experience in sales and, mm -hmm. and the way that I've been successful and, and have built sales teams, um, you know, on that. But I think constantly being, um, you know, aware and present in what you're doing is super, super important. And that's sort of the guiding principle of everything that I've talked about is, I don't mean this in like some sort of like big nebulous thing, Sales is a grind. Like what we do is really friggin' hard. If sales was <laughs> easy, everybody would do it and we wouldn't mm -hmm. get paid more than most doctors do. Right. Mm -hmm. So don't take that for granted, mm -hmm. but also recognize that it is a grind. And like sometimes just going from thing to thing to thing to thing, especially as we get into Q4, you're going to end up doubling and tripling down on things that aren't working. So like mm -hmm. have tools in place where you can A-B test, report on everything, have a thesis or a suspicion and verify it with data, whether it's the market that you're going after, the thing that you're trying to change, the message that you're crafting and always be looking for that like a little bit. And I'll take mm -hmm. this from like Henry, Henry Shuck, our CEO at ZoomInfo, says at the end of every conversation that we have um, is get 1% better. You don't have to do everything today, but if you do 1% better today and 1% better tomorrow, and for the rest of the year, at the end of the year, you're 365% better. Mm -hmm. So look yeah. for those opportunities as well. <laughs> 